Okay, so let's talk about middle ear bar trauma. For example, in diving. So one of the most important things to remember in order to understand this bar trauma is the boy's law. Boy's law states that P times V is constant, namely the pressure times the volume is constant. So, if we change one of them, we will change the other. Now, all of this is considered when the temperature is constant. This is based on the ideal gas uh, formula. So, when we are diving, when we dive deeper, the pressure increases, so the volume decreases. So, if you look at a bubble, while you decrease in the sea, in the depth, when the pressure increases, so the volume decreases, so if you look at that bubble, you will see that it becomes smaller and smaller as you dive deeper. Now, if you look at your middle ear and the tympanic cavity, you will see that it's a closed space that is can communicate with the pressure in the outside world throughout a, let's call it a thin, partially closed sometimes tube, which is, which connects the middle ear to the area of the pharynx which is the Eustachian tube. Now this Eustachian tube, in order to equivalent the pressure in the middle ear and the outside world, should open. And if it opens, it really set the pressure in the middle ear as it should as at the outside ambient pressure when you dive. So if what is called the Valsava maneuver, opening the Eustachian tube work okay and the Eustachian tube open up so while diving it's okay but if there are problems in the Eustachian tube, for example allergies, for example closed Eustachian tube, for example upper respiratory tract infection or something, polyps, something that can close the Eustachian tube and prevent it from equalizing the pressure between the middle ear and the ambient pressure so what will happen when you dive is that the ambient pressure around the middle ear will increase but the pressure inside the middle ear will stay the same but if it does what happens is that around the middle ear there will be higher pressure so in the middle ear there will be relatively negative pressure this will cause to, to blood vessels in the middle ear to secret fluids and even blood to the middle ear so there can be fluids that accumulate in the middle ear and blood that accumulates in the middle ear and can cause hemotympanum when this happens when the stacking tube doesn't open and the pressure cannot equalize between the middle ear and the ambient pressure. So this can cause negative pressure in the middle ear. This negative pressure can cause fluid accumulation and blood accumulation. When the negative pressure is too high, the tympanic membrane can perforate. So there will, can also be perforation of the tympanic membrane. So if it even gets worse when the, when the patient who dives try to open the ostachian tube very very let's call it with a lot of strength it can cause rupture of the oval or round windows in the inner ear and can cause perilymphatic fistula which is also called inner ear bar trauma but we are talking about middle ear bowel trauma and not inner ear bowel trauma, but note that it can happen. So, inner, uh, middle ear bowel trauma 
can manifest with fluids, with hemotympanum, with ruptured tympanic membrane. The tympanic membrane can also be erythemic, and those are the main things that can happen to the middle ear in middle ear barrel trauma. The patient will have pain, conductive hearing loss may occur because of the fluids and, and the blood, conductive hearing loss because of the ruptured tympanic membrane, with tympanometry type B because the tympanic membrane ruptured or there are fluids. And the treatment should be if there is no rupture of the tympanic membrane, decogestant for some days, for some days, without three days, no more, three, five days, three days, because the patient can get accused to, to those decogestants. So, and no diving until the patient gets better and the audiometry is okay without hearing loss, especially without conductive hearing loss. When the patient is okay and the, and the otoscopy is okay and the audiometry is okay, so then you can return diving. Now, if there is rupture of the tympanic membrane, it's more complicated because we need to wait for the tympanic membrane to heal and all of the other things, pain, hearing loss, to get better. But remember that not all of the ruptured tympanic membrane heal. Sometimes there will be need for tympanoplasty or meringoplasty more specifically to close the rupture because if the rupture is too big it won't be able to close spontaneously. But if it's small, it may it will it may take some months, and until then the patient cannot die. Remember that if there is ruptured tympanic membrane in when the patient dies, it can cause cold water to get inside the middle ear. It can cause vertigo because it can do something very similar to caloric testing by stimulating the semicircular canals and this way cause vertigo. Also, there can be an infection. There may be an infection. So, if there is an infection, of course, the patient should be treated for an infection. So, this is, those are the main things about middle ear bowel trauma, especially when diving, rupture of the tympanic membrane, infection, hemotympanum, fluids, because of staphylococcal dysfunction usually, or when the patient is not pumping enough good to open those staphylococcus when it should. Remember, the most important parts of diving with pumping for those staphylococcus to be open is the first few meters, not very deep, first few meters are the most skeptical for Middle ear bowel trauma. So note there. So this was about middle ear bowel trauma, especially in diving. Thank you very much. If there are any mistakes or correction, I'm sorry. I tried to be at least correct, at least partially correct. Thank you very much, and that's it.